Okay. <clears throat> so overall, it's about 52 inches wide. Schumacher says to, to give you a wide range of how much to trim. <clears throat> so if I put my tape measure at 22 underneath it on the edge, Oh, she's moving. <clears throat> nope, she's moving. Butting it up against each other <clears throat> is actually what I did the last time I hung this because I didn't have any issues at all. But here you can see that it would profit from getting trimmed. You can see right here, it does not match up perfectly. But just down on the same medallion, it does match up per perfectly. So I'm inclined to take just a half of an inch off of one of the, one of the edges. Today we're hanging a Schumacher. This name scares a lot of paper hangers. Not me. And don't let it scare you. Here's the problem. They don't give you a... Uh, my goodness, I can't remember the name. They don't give you cut marks. Okay, trim lines. The instructions tell you Oh, check this out. Trim a half of an inch to an inch to two inches. <laughs> I kid you not, in case you think I'm joking. Let me show you this. Let me show you this. Check this out. Before hanging, using a sharp utility knife, a new blade for each cut, trim the edges of each strip one to one and a half to two inches for proper seam alignment. Now, I'm not, I don't have the time to show you that what you just heard was absolutely false. Absolutely false. Let me try to simulate with the swatch. Uh, tch, tch, tch. If you were to trim off as much as they say, okay, there's an inch. You see how you'd be off already? Now, here's two inches. <laughs> okay, so we don't go by that, obviously. Now, the backing is a very porous, very fine backing. And I've decided to dry hang the product because I'm gonna trim it on the wall. I have no other choice. So my wall is pasted with a very dry paste that is to say that it's not 880 and it's not 838 but its water content is low here's why if you wet this too much the the stain of the paste could come through and make marks on the wall covering also what happens with this is it will delaminate do you see those impressions from the pattern? Well, the paste gets in between this. You can already see impressions. The, the, you will, if you take too long to work with it, the backing will come off. So we're going to dry hang it, which means that we took our sponge and we wiped down the backing and we booked it. So now, our backing has uh, a, you ever take a dry rag, right? This, imagine this being dry. You put, it's all stiff, it's standing up. Then you put it in, what happens? It relaxes, right? And that's what you want your backing to do. That's all, let's get this up. We have our line, if you can't see it, there it is. Our laser. 
and we're going to install this beautiful product. A couple of pointers about geometric patterns. Uh, one, you have to be careful to, um, to keep the pattern at the same point all around the room. You'll notice that at the top of each diamond is my crown molding. And that is, I do that on purpose so that I can gauge the, the straightness of my pattern. You can easily lose a half an inch here. Think about it, if, I, if I'm straight here and I'm not paying attention, and the crown is perfectly straight, level meaning level, I can lose a half an inch on this 53 inch spread. It's by being careless. I just kind of put it up there and I, half an inch is nothing when you're dealing with this. You can stretch this a half an inch. So I'm a half an inch down. The next sheet, I'm another half an inch. Well, guess what? Over the course of 106 inches, I'm off an inch. So you got the diamonds, I'm slowly going down. Whoa, what's going on? I lose the diamond. And then you say, well, it's your ceiling, it's your crown molding. No, you get that laser level, you do a horizontal line on it after two sheets and you make sure that this is perfectly level. If not, you call the customer in and say, look, the laser level is not wrong. You're off somewhere, okay? Usually you're gonna be off in the corner. So when you cut into your corner, you're going to recover level and plumb by adjusting the corner. Okay. When you're dealing with a product like this, you want to use a brush. Okay. You can get these at your local. They have these at Dairy Queen, believe it or not. That's a uh, local ice cream shop in the continental USA. And when we're sweeping any wall covering, we want to start in the center of the sheet and go down from the center. Just like a Christmas tree, you know, we used to draw Christmas trees when we were kids in that shape. So you start in the center and go that way. You're actually forcing any air to the path of least resistance. Secondly, you're not putting any tension on the wall covering where you can knock it out of square. If you do it evenly, if you keep doing this, look, not good. You wanna go down and away. So I wanna take eight and a half inches off of this very cumbersome sheet because the distance from this edge to the corner plus the amount that my corner is off is eight and a half inches. I measured at the top, I measured in the middle, and I measured at the bottom, came up with two different numbers. And so eight and a half is the length I need to get the wallpaper to overlap onto the sheet and to fit into the corner with just enough to go around onto this wall. And that I usually use one eighth of an inch. So I have enough now with this measurement to overlap onto the sheet, to fill in this space and to overlap onto this wall one eighth of an inch. So I'm just going to use my edger to just go right up against that tape to trim it there, okay? And I'm going to use my single edge blade. We want the sharpest cut we can get, okay? You can get these at Dairy Queen as well, which is a, an ice cream place. I'm 
joking about Dairy Queen. Don't play with this though. This will put you out of commission for a while. You must protect your hand. Now, I was always opposed to using an edger this thick, but the reason the old timers made this is so that your fingers are protected in case this thing goes wonky on you. So that's why they use this. Now, I'm a lefty. I'm going to want to trim with the overlap on the right side and the underlap on the left, okay? My left hand needs to be seeing that as I cut down. If you're a righty, you're going to want this piece overlapped onto here so that the action is over here, okay? Now, the result is that this is my overlap. Ludicrous. Now you can say, Spencer, you should have just taken this, moved it over here, right? You know, trim it down. You're not supposed to be trimming this 12 inches. No, we already saw the instructions was one to two inches. Okay? This is the end of a sheet. This is the beginning of a sheet. We don't have two inches to overlap here. We're talking three sixteenths of an inch. Schumacher, I'm talking directly to you. This is, this is not cool. And you'll get a better job. You can't put such a cum such a uh, an obstacle in the way of your installers if you make a, a product that's geared toward a better installation your products are going to look beautiful in high-end homes but to put a challenge like this on the average installer you, you're setting yourself up for failure it's going to reflect poorly on the schumacher product i mean if i'm if this is colgan wallpaper guess what i'm going to give you guys I'm going to give you guys an inch. I'm going to give you an inch. This? I'm sorry. You know, a little professional critique, that's, that's ridiculous. So we're going to trim the edges, the perimeter. Let's call it the perimeter, the base, the casings, with, with our regular blade, 9 millimeter. But for the double cut, we're going to be sure to use the single edge blade. Now I'm going to do my double cut. Do you need a laser level to do this double cut? No. Our threshold for error is so narrow, you'd be silly to go more than an eighth of an inch away from your edge. So your edge is going to be your visible guide. And that's why it's so important, if you're a lefty or a righty, to have the right um, to have the right side flapped over. So, we don't need a laser level, needless to say. We don't need a laser level an eighth of an inch away from our edge to tell us that we're cutting it straight, right? Capiche? Good. All right. Now we have paced right under that area where we need it. And we don't have paste under the wall covering where we don't need it. So we're not getting paste onto this, by the way. If you do get paste on this, <laughs> comes right off. Yep, comes right off. Got to use microfiber cloths, okay? Comes right off. I mean, you got to be diligent and you got to be prudent. Don't get it, don't, don't throw paste at it. But if you do get it on, uh, get a couple of microfibers, get the first glob off by, I'll show you how to do it in the video if I remember. Okay, first setup, foul. This, 
this is a pain. That's all it is. It's a pain. Colossal pain. So here's what I'm doing, just in case you can't. The edge of my wallpaper, I'm just trimming it, just keeping the edge in sight so my eye is close. Okay, let's see how I did. That's our cut. That's our seam. Remember now, it's grass cloth. The seams are accentuated. What do I mean? Oh, it's looking so good. So now let's talk about the seam. Because, you know, why do we have a seam, right? Let's, let's discuss it. I'm going to take a single edge and cut through this wall cover, okay? I don't think I can do it with one hand, so I'm going to put you down. Actually, I'll put you down and you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Single edge. Bring it down here. So we cut this sheet now. We're going to simulate what just happened. Let's double cut this, okay? We're going to cut through here. All right. Let's do this double cut. So we're going to double cut through it. just did okay so we won't shut the video off let me turn the camera around okay so we've cut through these fibers that are that are bound you see all of this this workmanship in here, you see this here? This is what makes a seam, you see that? So picture penetrating all of these bound elements in each of these colors, the whites, the tans. You're, you're cutting through them, and if you look really close, you'll see 
raised hairs, right? You see that? See right there? Well, when you step away, you can see a, a difference than when you're up close. When you're far away, these frayed edges, so to speak, and that's why we reduce the fray by using a single edge, well, they cause an entrapment of light by the shadows that are created by the little pieces sticking up. Okay, magnify that by eight, ten feet of a, of a length. And so you get a line. You get a line. Something that's inevitable with grass cloth. Okay. The best case scenario you're going to get is by using a single edge and by uh, brushing it afterwards. You can take a damp cloth to put the hairs back together. Well, this is what I mean. So these hairs go a certain way. You see these frayed edges here. So on the edge, you'll have, you, you want to put them back where they go so that the white is on the white. If you have white sticking up on the tan, and I'm talking about a sixteenth of an inch, well, it'll, it'll draw more attention to the line. So I'm just trying to explain, why do you see a line? As long as my pattern meets up and I've cut through them, I've done my job. Now, ideally, I'd love... Do you see this manufactured line here? You see this kind of light? That's where I'd like to cut it. But I don't have the money to tell the customer, hey, let me waste, uh, you know, uh, a foot of your wallpaper on every sheet. It's just not practical. But what I would like to do is slice right down here and join the next piece right here. In fact, I might do that and put it in this video. This is of paramount importance, what I'm talking about here. And it's difficult with this wide product. Okay, it meets up beautifully in the corner, right? We agree on that? Here's the problem. If it's off over here, we gotta come back here and trim it. This must be straight with these geometric, because if I lose my crown, remember the issue with the point of each of these at the top? This is where you're gonna lose it. I am so happy, because check it out, even though I lost an eighth of an inch here, okay? Because look, there's my corner, and there's, look at this, I regain it over here, and I come back and I've gained it. I'm not messing with this. It's a lot of work. And why? Why trim this? You know how hard this is to trim in the corner? Forget it. Forget it. By the way, you're going to have imperfections, as they say in the directions, with the, um, with the weave or whatever they call it. But that's... That's okay. Okay, so... There you have it. Okay, we don't want to knock this out of square. And so, we want to get the, we want to, you know, like when you're making your bed, you don't want to pull it too hard in any one direction. Same thing here. I'm going straight across because I can't put torque on this by going in. The, I'm just pulling it straight. Okay. So that's the look. I mean, this is gorgeous stuff. Come on. Now, let's say you wanted to cut it in a different way, which... I agree, let's make our job easier. As long as you don't affect the number of medallions, 
And you would want to be consistent if you started it here. You would want to continue to go because your seams will still be visible. You could come over from here to the center. You put a laser on this center right here. You take your next sheet, you overlap it to over to about here. And now your laser line is telling you what's under it and what's over this. You understand? So if you have your laser line on this right here, you know that this is the center. Once you put another piece of wallpaper over here, you know that the laser is on this still. So if you replicate the pattern with the next sheet, you could theoretically cut right through it, aiming to get this, half of this diamond, half of this diamond. And what you would do is you wouldn't put paste on this. The paste would end here, and you would simply put tape on it. That's another idea. I wouldn't want to play games and try to cut the edge of this one. I would go for something like right there. I mean, you could do it right here. Catch this, right? Catch this one, catch this one. So that's another idea for you. So maybe we'll try that. We have our line right in the center of the medallion. When we overlap it, we will keep that laser line in the, in the new place with the overlap. So we've used push pins to keep it in place as we position it on the wall. It's not easy to keep 54 inch goods in place. And so now we'll take those push pins out. Okay. I abandoned the idea of overlapping it over to here because as I did it, it didn't match up. Of Another point, when you trim your wall covering, you're voiding, that's a damp spot, damp. You're voiding some of the material. And so all the more reason why you would see your seam. Okay, 